Bismillah, alhamdulillah. I'd like to thank everybody for sticking around to, want, to witness this beautiful moment of a person, in a sense, being reborn. That when a human being, he comes to the realization that it's a time in my life that I have to ponder and think, what's the purpose of my life? Why am I here? Is it just to play, have fun, go to the nightclubs, kick it on the weekends, earn some money, have a good time, and then I die? Or is there more to life? You see people dying every day. It's very important that we think about these things. And this man thought about it, and he's been researching for a few months now, contacted me, we know each other a little bit, we've been talking, and he uh, emailed me in short. Paraphrasing his email that uh, he was once a Christian, but he always had this in the back of his head the confusion of the power that's supposed to be given to the Creator being given to somebody else. It didn't make sense. So how does one distinguish with all the different ways of life, calling to, uh, to people, telling them that they're the only way? How do we distinguish what's the right way with all this confusion? When a human being uses the tools that the Creator of the heavens and the earth has given him, he's embedded in all of us this innate nature to worship the one God. A spiritual chip in a sense. So when you see the attributes of man, man is weak, man is born, man dies. When you see a cow, when you see animals, when you see the sun, these are all the creations of the Creator. But when it comes to you, the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and then go to the bathroom. He's not a man that has an area code, a zip code, now you can finger, fingerprint him, take his picture and the girl say, oh, he's cute. That he has a color, a skin tone, a skeleton. That he eats, goes to the bathroom, comes out of the womb of a woman. This is not God. And this is something that anyone, even if they're a non-Muslim and they're listening, the inside of him, if he's not bobbing his head, yes, the inside of him is saying, yes, I want to worship the one God, the God who created the sun, the moon, the God who Jesus called upon. When he fell on his face, he prayed to who himself? No, he prayed to the one God. He prayed the same way Moses prayed, the same way Abraham prayed, in the same way we're praying here today, worshiping not the sun, not the moon, not Muhammad, not Jesus. We're worshiping the same way all the messages of God, they worship. And when our new brother here, when he investigated this, he took the time out of his busy schedule. He's an architect, he's a professional, and he trains the body and the mind. And he says, man, my soul, I need to look into this a little more because I spent all the other time researching and studying how to be the best architect, how to make money, but this is a little more important. I need to take a time out. So he picked up the Quran, which is the last and final testament, the last and final revelation. It's not edited by man, changed, suited for the time. It's been preserved for 1400 years. If anyone wants to take a look, it challenges the reader, prove, if you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. God doesn't make mistakes. So this book that has been preserved, that was revealed over a span of 23 years in the Arabic, the original. He studied this, he looked into it. He saw that the attributes of the Creator, that we defined that He's one. Absolutely alone worthy of worship. Not worshiping the creation, but worshiping the Creator. 
he acknowledged this. In the same way that this shahada, this testimony is nothing new. This is something that if you were living during the time of Jesus, as what we have allegedly attributed to Jesus, because we know we don't have the past books, they've been changed, we don't have the originals. But what we have today, we see Jesus, peace be upon him, saying, this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus who you have sent. So if you were living during the time of Jesus, you had to follow him. He was the way, the truth, and the light. He was a messenger teaching you how to get close to God. But he didn't call you to worship him. None of the messengers called on the people to worship themselves. Moses, if you were living during the time of Moses, Moses didn't call people to worship a man God, to worship the sun, the moon. He called the people to worship the one God. So did Abraham. They were ones who submitted themselves to the one God. This is the same way of life that God has sent throughout time. It's a universal way of life. To surrender and to submit to the one God doing what He wants you to do. Not making your own organized religion. We shouldn't have to follow a man-made religion. And He has acknowledged that. He's going to be taking the declaration of faith, doing what all the messengers of God did, submitting to the one God. Islam is not a new religion brought by Muhammad. It's the same way of life that was implemented during the time of Moses, Jesus, Abraham, Noah, and all the messengers of God that came with that same way, the one way. Surrender and submit to God alone and not His creation. So, we're going to do the first step. It's the Shahada. How are you feeling, brother? Ah, uh, great. All right. So, I'm going to say it in English. And then we're going to do it in the Arabic. <coughs> now, I just want to take a minute because a lot of these things for new Muslims, for people when they hear certain Arabic words, some things you have to understand is kind of foreign to them. But when we say Allah, we just define who Allah is. He's not a man, a monkey, the sun, the moon. He's not like us. Can you be God? You ask yourself, no. Because you have certain man qualities. God doesn't have the same qualities. He's the creator, we're the creation. So when we say Allah, He's one, absolute, eternal. He's not the father of someone. He doesn't have sons and daughters like we do. He doesn't go to the bathroom, eat, get sick, and have to take an Advil. No, this is not God. So this is Allah. In Aramaic, the language that Jesus spoke, He didn't speak English, He didn't say God. He said Allah. In Hebrew, Eloh, Elohim. Allah doesn't take a person with too much intelligence and too many doctor's degrees to see that Eloh, Allah, Allah. It's the same God that the Jews and Christians who are Arabic speaking, they call on Allah. So that's the testimony of faith that He's taking our new brother today is that he bears witness. It's the first a negation of all the other gods. Can be a money god, can be your own mind making God into something convenient in your mind and you're worshiping your mind instead of God. The money, the material things, a man, a monkey, an elephant, anything in the creation, he's acknowledging that these are not God. God is the one who created everything in this universe. That's the one I'm gonna worship and prostrate to. How can you go wrong doing that? So in English, I testify, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah. And Muhammad is his slave, servant, and messenger, confirming Jesus, Moses, and all Abraham and all the other messengers. Do you believe this? Yes, I do. Were you coerced? Did someone twist your arm? Did somebody make you, coerce you, put a spell on you to do this? No. Nope. Beautiful. Now in the Arabic. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Now, before all the brothers come and introduce themselves, I want to make this clear that. This God that we worship is a merciful God. He's a loving God. And when a person takes the free choice 
of either worshiping the creation or the creator, he absolves him from all his sins. Clean slate. All his bad deeds are turned into good deeds. If you owe somebody some money, you got to pay the debt. If you did something wrong to someone, you got to go make amends. But God has absolved you of all your sins. You're like a newborn baby. You're going to establish the prayer five times a day, pay the charity, fast during the month of Ramadan, do the Hajj when you're physically and financially able, stay away from bad, invite people to good, do good, and be the best human being that you can be. Welcome to Islam, my brother. <laughs> It's the right way. It's the only way. It feels good, man. It feels really good. It's the best thing I ever did. Study. Study, look it up, research it, and may your mind be open and accept it. It feels pretty good. Good. I worship the sole creator of the heavens and the universe. La ilaha illallah Allah There's only one God and He created Adam And we are the children of Adam Allah La ilaha illallah بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم